Hello to all of you beautiful humans watching me today on your phones, or maybe like 1% of you on your computer screens. What we're going to do today is a heavily, heavily requested video. Since the dawn of my channel, you guys have been wanting Datura trip reports, the craziest delirium compound that makes people hallucinate actual real people in their vicinity. Now this compound, I've said it before, has been used in that very infamous Vice documentary where they extracted scopolamine from it, blow it in people's faces, and continue to brainwash them. What I'm going to do is read one of the trip reports off Arrowhead. You guys know the series, I'm going to tell you what he did right, what he did wrong, what he could have done to practice better safety protocol. In this instance, just don't f***ing take scopolamine. Like, duh, seriously. <laughs> and this is all being done for the sake of harm reduction and safety. I do not, do not, under any circumstances, recommend that anyone takes Jimson weed. Don't touch that sh It can cause permanent brain damage, memory loss, permanent damage to your fucking brain. Don't touch it. Let's jump right into this story. Quick note, this is actually my first time reading this. Cody chooses these, I read them. So I have no idea what to expect. So I'm gonna be reacting with it to it live with you guys watching. Revisiting this experience is somewhat difficult for me. The few hours I remember are some of the most frightening and potentially deadly I have ever had the displeasure of experiencing. I was 17 and rebellious. Don't take shit when you're 17. First thing, brain isn't fully developed till 25, maybe. Damaging the still developing brain is nothing but hazardous for your health. I grew up in a very conservative fam wealthy family and by my early teens I found myself experimenting with pot mostly out of my desperation for friends. All these teenagers, they want to be socially accepted so bad they'll do anything. Pot is eaten. No, I'm kidding. Pot's not that bad. <laughs> By the time I was 17, I was regularly getting stoned and loving this new world I discovered. I was meeting people and spending time in places that my parents would have died had they ever found out about, and I loved it. I loved my independence. I loved thinking I knew better. As does everyone as a teenager, I was a complete moron. And I thought, I thought I knew everything. By the time I was about 17, the same group, group of friends that introduced me to pot had started talking about this thing called the Moonflower. Desperate to prove myself to these older, cooler kids, I told them I'd love to try it and we went on the search throughout town to hopefully find some growing. Now this stuff grows naturally everywhere. You can find it in your garden in some places. We found a plant and took a few pods to one of the guys home. I don't remember how much I took that night, but it wasn't much. Now what you do is you open the pod and you eat um, a seed or two. I believe two seeds of a very potent pod could be enough to kill you. So I'm looking up here, the fatal dose of Datura. So you cut the pods open, you eat the seeds. And the first thing I see says 50 to 100 Datura seeds would kill you. But then there's another post that says between 15 and 25 seeds can be fatal. The problem is it says as little as 15 grams of Datura. And if you're not weighing the seeds, I guess some seeds are bigger than others. It could vary so wildly. And you also don't know the potency. Some plants can be significantly more potent than others, in which case the same amount of seeds from one plant that you would survive, you'd die from the next plant. That is why this is so dangerous, don't ever touch it. I remember going home pretty soon after and coaxing myself into thinking I was starting to trip out. I'd never done anything but smoke weed, so I didn't know how much of this was even supposed to do. The little information they had given me led me to believe it was some kind of hallucinogen. That's literally all I knew about it. It is not a hallucinogen, it is called a deliriant. Primary difference between deliriants and traditional hallucinogens, also called psychedelics, is deliriants make you delirious. I mean, it's in the name, no shit. They will cause you to truly hallucinate, okay? So what people call hallucinogens or psychedelics aren't the real hallucinogenic substances. The real ones are deliriants. All those people taking huge doses of Benadryl, deliriant compound. And what that means in practical terms is, as I said, you will be in like a living nightmare. I would say dream, but it's never a dream. These are nightmare experiences where you will full on hallucinate people, scenarios, places, that you're not at. Like you could think you're walking through the jungle as you head straight into traffic and die. It's that serious. You will no longer be seeing reality out of your eye holes. After that failed night, a few months had gone by and I found myself at the local lake with some friends hanging out on the beach. I noticed some gigantic moonflower plants growing nearby and upon closer inspection, I noticed that there were several huge spiny pods growing all around it. I picked four or five of the biggest ones and headed home. They looked kind of cool, so I lined them on the top of my TV in my room and kind of forgot about them. A couple days later, my entire family came down, came down with their wives and children. I'm the youngest. We're a pretty close family 
family, so we spent the day hanging out and just having a good time. Little did I know what was coming that night. It was about three in the morning and I was bored with nothing to do. I'd spent all the time I could on the computer and there was nothing on TV, but I soon remembered the spiny pods sitting on the top of my television. I was in a pretty daring mood and I didn't want another false start. So I took two of the pods upstairs with me and cut them open in the kitchen. I completely emptied the components of both pods and poured a glass of my favorite juice. I guess he is 17. I was gonna say, what is he, a kid, his favorite juice? Then proceeded to pour the contents into my mouth where I chewed them up to a pulp and swallowed the mush with a few gulps of fruit juice. It's been six years since that night, but as I sit here and remember it, I'm actually gagging as I think about it. I sat in the kitchen for a few minutes, then remembered walking downstairs into my bedroom. I sat on the bed waiting for something to happen, and after 10 minutes or so had passed, I started thinking it must have been another dud pod. Ah, oh, shit. So wait, how many? 10 minutes? This mother didn't even give it an adequate amount of time to take hold of effect, okay? 10 minutes. That's like you take six tabs of acid and you wait 10 minutes. You're like, oh, nothing happened. Let's take another six. Before you take any compound, you must research how long the come up is. Some substances have crazy long come ups. When I've tried San Pedro cactus, what's the P one? I keep thinking papaya. It's not papaya. What's the other one? Peyote. <laughs> San Pedro and papaya cactus and uh, mescaline, just the extracted mescaline hydrochloride. It's taken sometimes over three hours to take effect. All these substances have different onset times. And it's usually, unless you're snorting it or injecting it, going to take a little longer than 10 minutes. So this is so reckless. This is why you research everything before you do it. I'm already getting mad at this guy. I don't even know him. You fucking stupid 17 year old. Why are you so fucking stupid? Okay, never mind. I just I just got really angry thinking you took more, and it doesn't look like you took more. You're still stupid for taking it, but thank goodness you didn't take more. I sat up to walk to the bathroom, and as I got up, I noticed a strong sense of dizziness come over me. It's working! I remember thinking. I walked into the bathroom with a really strong urge to urinate, but as soon as I stood over the toilet, I noticed that I couldn't go. Sounds like me on some substances, like, uh, I don't know, ketamine. Makes it really hard to pee. 3MC, even MDMA can make it so hard to pee. I hate that feeling. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't start to pee. By this time, the effects were almost doubling every minute or so. Oh shit. And my mind was becoming more and more cloudy. I had to pee so bad. And I remember that every time I got up, that every time I get into hot water, I had a hard time not going. So hey, why not turn on the outside jacuzzi? Genius idea, I thought. I started walking out of the bathroom and as I caught my reflection on the way out, I stopped and stood there staring at myself, not recognizing the person looking back at me. I sat there moving my face around and feeling it with my hand as the effects came washing over me faster and faster. I'd never felt anything like this before and I was kind of liking it. Wow, you're a sick sadistic person, aren't you? By this time I had started to teleport around the house. I have absolutely no memory of walking around. I just remember appearing in different rooms. I opened my eyes and I was in my bedroom, looking into the mirror, getting more and more confused about who was looking back at me. Sounds like an ego death. I teleport to the jacuzzi controls and turned it on. The jacuzzi takes a good 20 minutes to heat up, but I just remember suddenly being in my swimsuit and trying to walk outside to get into the warm jacuzzi. I'm gonna take a guess. There is no jacuzzi. He never got in his swimsuit. Probably butt ass naked. Let's find out. I remember having the hardest trying time. I remember having the hardest time trying to lift my legs to walk by now. I remember having the hardest time trying to lift my legs to walk by now. This guy writes. I don't like his writing. I'm having trouble. I'm stumbling on the words because the words that I think are going to come next aren't. He's just writing in a slightly different way. It just doesn't sound um, so organic. I got to the edge of the jacuzzi, which has about a one foot high ledge to step over. And I thought I was lifting my leg high enough to step over the ledge. But as I went to take my step, I noticed my foot was only a few inches from the ground. I tried again and the same result. I bent down and lifted my leg up with my hands. And suddenly I was sitting down in the warm water. I was finally able to urinate and I was just sitting there in a complete daze. Fun fact, when kids pee in a pool, it doesn't go anywhere. The chlorine does not eliminate the urine. In fact, some people suggest that when your eyes burn from swimming in chlorinated pools, it's the urine that's making your eyes burn. Just think about that. Next time you go in a public pool or someone's jacuzzi who's been on Datura and pissed themselves in it, you're just chilling in their pee. This is where I started to piss in and out of consciousness. Oh, pass. <laughs> so he pissed in and out. The best way to explain it is to say it's exactly like when someone holds my neck and passes me out and I start coming back from it. 
Does he have a lot of experience getting choked out? The fuck is this guy? He really does like pain and dying. I get this weird, static noise in the background, like from a television that slowly fades away and I back to normal again. This started happening over and over again. It was even stranger because the noise of the water and jets mixed in with the static and it all blended together. This is the scariest part. I'll give a brief explanation of the outlay of our backyard to better convey the situation. He's trying to sound intelligent, but I hate his writing. I just hate it. Basically, the pool and jacuzzi sit about 25 feet away from the house, and the house faces a steep drop-off that looks out over the city. There's homes on both sides of ours that are separated by a high brick wall. I was situated in a way that I was facing the house with my back to the drop-off and able to see the brick wall to our neighbor's house in my far right, about 50 feet away. Remember, this is now about 3.30 to 4 in the morning, so it's pitch dark. Yeah, that's it. Pitch black. It's pitch black outside, not pitch dark. Maybe English isn't his uh, first language. I remember looking over at the wall and seeing a dark figure appear. It was more of a black shadow than a person, and it slid up over the wall and started crawling over to me. The moment the first figure started over the wall, it was followed by three others that looked exactly like it. I followed them with my eyes, and as they slid up and over the yard until they slipped, they're just slipping, sliding around here, into the water in front of me. Then darkness. Now static. I can't see anything, but I can hear the static getting louder and louder. It's building up more and more until it morphs into the sound of the jacuzzi jets. I look up and the figures are gone. He saw the shadow people. Now darkness again. The beings are back. I'm talking to them, but I don't remember what about. Oh, probably about how they're going to take over your soul and possess your body for the rest of your life. Then suddenly I come back to and I'm in the house, standing in the downstairs living room dripping wet. I start walking to my bedroom and I notice the light is turned on. I didn't leave the light turned on, I think to myself. I walk in and to my absolute horror, my entire family is there. They're all staring at me with looks of disgust and surprise. My dad approaches me and in a demanding voice says, What are you on? I desperately try to answer, nothing, nothing, daddy. But my mouth won't work. I finally get something close to nothing out. N nothing, nothing. And he answers back, you're slurring your words so badly, I can't even understand you. Now tell me what you're on. I scream back, nothing, and turn to my bed. My mom is sitting on it and I lay down next to her. She places her hand underneath me to feel my heart and I hear her say, his heart is about to beat out of his chest. I get scared and in my final words utter, Moonflower, moonflower, I took the moonflower. They ask in confusion, what is moonflower? And I point to my TV. I raise my hand and yell, moonflower, as I point at the pods on my TV. Then darkness swallows me. That was my last memory. Suddenly I wake up and my mom is holding me. I'm sitting on the couch in the office and I see a figure charging towards me. I start batting at it with my hands and screaming and my mom holds me down and says, Alex. It's just a hallucination, settle down. I come back and look at my arm. There's a bandage over my veins near my elbow and a hospital ID tag around my wrist. I ask what's going on and my mom tells me I've been in the hospital for the last 24 hours. Apparently they rushed me to the hospital after I passed out on my bed and I went crazy when I got there. I was punching the nurses, holy shit, and swearing at everyone, you motherfuckers. So they had to restrain me on my hospital bed. I started to seizure. Oh, that's lovely. I always love when that happens. So they gave me this stuff that's supposed to knock you out, but it didn't work until they gave me 10 times more than what's normally required. Hmm. Tough guy, huh? Really sound like a tough guy with this story. My entire family really was in my room because apparently at some point I walked into the room my sister was sleeping in and mumbled some gibberish. So she went to my parents and woke them up, which woke everyone else up and they all wanted to see what was going on. To this day, I honestly think I was starting to cross over to the spirit world. And I was looking at actual, no, you weren't looking at actual spirits, you dumb kid. No, no, you were hallucinating. It's what the damn thing does. I mean, maybe, okay, that's arrogant of me to say, who knows? Maybe they were looking over me. If I had fallen into the pool, I would have unquestionably drowned. If I had walked over the edge of the yard, I would have fallen to my death. The fact I didn't kill myself that night is a total miracle. Now that I agree with, my friend, I, that I agree with. Like I said, you could have walked straight into traffic and seen none of the cars. Moonflower, gypsum weed, not gypsum weed, gypsum weed, okay. Or whatever is a terrible weed. <laughs> yeah, all right, I will stay away from it like the plague. I literally had no control over my body once it kicked in. I could have murdered my entire family and I would have never remembered it. There isn't enough money in the world to make me try it again. That took place in 2004, he's a male. 
He was 17, and he got the courage to write it in 2011. All right, now what could he have done safer? He's 17. Don't take this shit when you're 17, period. In fact, when it comes to gypsum weed, don't ever touch it. There are some substances that you should just not take. This, my friends, is one of them. You will be hard pressed to find any good encounters with gypsum. That's what I'm gonna call it now, but it's gypsum weed. <laughs> I've also never heard of it being called moonflower, to be honest, but that's what this guy called it. I, I, I've, okay, I've read a few, but they're so few and far between. I think you need to be a special kind of psychotic to enjoy this experience, to be totally frank with you. What could he have done better? Like I said, just not take it. What is my advice for him? Do we really have to give my advice? Like, really? Is it not obvious? Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button, leave a comment for the algorithm, head on over to psychsubstance.shop and pick up your very own trip blanket. If you want to see the uncut version of these videos and the last video, <laughs> there is an epic uncut scene. Like, I mean, probably the best uncut scene in terms of just like wow value of any of my videos. So if you want to see like the real hardcore version of our last video, which is one of my favorite videos I've ever made, link will pop up at the end. Join our Patreon, that and other videos. You can see all the stuff we can't show here. Anyway, take care, guys. Go ahead and smash that like button. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Cheers.